Well, what is up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's reaction video is the top 10 most infamous F5s or EF5 tornadoes. Ooh, I don't know what the difference is between EF5 and an F5. Is E like stand for extreme? I was thinking extreme, um, but then surely that's just an F6. Oh yeah, it goes up, doesn't it? I think so. I, I don't know, let us in the comments. I'm sure Unless they video... don't clarify, this, they don't like make it as a six but they are really bad maybe i don't know uh, this video might tell us uh, maybe i'm getting ahead of ourselves we're doing a weather video um <laughs> so hopefully this stays up um it's been a long time since we've it done a weather been. video if you do enjoy this and you want us to do more it needs to be worth it in terms of it's a bit risky isn't it so please smash that like button smash that comment uh, the comments with yes we want to see this or information about them and then we know you want to see them and it's like okay people actually want to see them it's worth mm -hmm. doing the little bit of a risk it is to do weather reactions yeah. We don't get these in the UK. Um, these are the top 10 most infamous, so they're going to, I imagine, be devastating as well. So if you was affected by it, we hope everyone's okay now and back on your feet. And, uh, and our hearts go out to anyone who had family members and stuff like that affected as yeah. well. Are you ready? I am. Let's get into it. The top 10 most infamous F5 and EF5 tornadoes. What we got? An F5 slash EF5 tornado is the highest rated tornado possible. Oh, these tornadoes are okay. deadly, they're devastating. No F6. And thankfully, they're quite rare. But they do occur, and in the past 150 years, there have been over 100 tornadoes that are believed to have had F5 slash EF5 strength. And today we're going to do a top wow. 10 list on what I think are the most significant of these tornadoes. What do I mean by significance? Well, essentially I'm talking about the top 10 most famous tornadoes. Whether that's due to the amount of damage it caused, the amount of fatalities, iconic footage that was captured Ooh, on the tornado, perhaps the lore behind a specific tornado. What are the tornadoes that have really captured the general public's fascination? That's what we're talking about today. Let's get into it. I think fascination is the right word, isn't it? Because it's, it's it devastating. It is interesting, but like at the same time, it's like, oh my God, that's real people life. Yeah, if you knew you could escape and not be harmed by it, I would love to see one from mm. a distance. Obviously, in a field, not causing destruction to anyone. But they are like, oh my God, I want to see one. But then it's also like, oh, yeah. I don't. <laughs> you know what I mean? It literally is that. It's that fine line, isn't it? Definitely. With number 10, we're starting off with the April 27th, 2011 super outbreak, specifically looking at the Hackleberg Phil Campbell EF5 tornado. The 2011 super outbreak remains the largest and costliest tornado outbreak on record with over 260 confirmed tornadoes and 324 what? fatalities. On that day, there were four 200. EF5 tornadoes. We haven't had an EF5 what? tornado since 2013, and there were four on this day alone. What? A truly insane day for weather. The deadliest and most destructive of all these tornadoes was the EF5 that struck the communities of Hackleburg, Phil Campbell, Tanner and Harvest in Alabama, and then Huntland in Tennessee. Overall, 72 lost their lives and over 145 were injured. Peak wind speeds were estimated to be in the 210 mile per hour what? range, and the event lasted for over two and a half hours, traveling 132 miles. 132 miles is a very long distance for a tornado. Yeah. EF5 damage mainly occurred in Hackleburg and Phil Campbell. Here's an example of the damage in Phil Campbell. A house completely swept off its foundation. Here's another similar example in Hackleburg. Oh, this EF5 basement. makes the list because it's probably the most significant tornado of the 2011 super outbreak. Although you could make an argument for the EF4 that struck Tuscaloosa and Birmingham. That is Quick mad. honorable mention to the Rainsville, Alabama, and Smithville and Philadelphia, Mississippi EF5s from that same day. Huge. Moving on to number nine with the catastrophic tornado that occurred only two years later on May 30th, 2013. Yes, we're talking about the Newcastle Moore EF5 tornado that resulted in 24 fatalities and 212 injuries. This tornado began northwest of Newcastle around 3 p.m. local time. It quickly strengthened and within five minutes, the National Weather Service declared a tornado emergency for southern Oklahoma City. That's when the tornado panic emergency sets is now coming. We do have a tornado emergency. This is a tornado emergency. This is higher than a tornado warning. I've seen a lot of hook echoes in my oh, day, so but none wow. just straight to emergency, like yes. Yeah, there's no warning. This is your warning. This, this is ain't it. a chance. This ain't a drill. Get to safety. Mm -hmm. Which, with a warning, you want to get to safety as well. But Yeah, but these are gives people time to prepare. Yeah, exactly. This and is just mentally, a case I feel like mentally prepare as well. Mentally prepare as well. And then there's other aspects. This black, is just I'm like... I'm mad, in it? And then there's the other time. aspects. Your kids might be in school as well, mm. so when you're thinking about that, that's scary as well, isn't it? Like... Quite as well defined as the 2013 Moore EF5. Just take a look at this. 
And look at that debris ball. It would be terrifying seeing something like this on radar. The tornado yeah. would then enter the suburbs of Moore, destroying oh. about 1,200 homes and hundreds of businesses. Wow. The scale of the destruction could be clearly seen through the satellite imagery available on Google Earth. The tornado reached peak you know sad bit about that? near eastern... Like, that image is like... I don't know if you can go back to it, but... Yeah. Like, the that street. One. The street is intact. And yeah. I bet there was so many houses on the, all those streets. You can even see driveways. Yeah, you can see the driveways. Like, and there's just, like, the little cul-de-sac here. Yeah, it's imagine, yeah, you've got seven or eight houses just on that. It, like, you can you... see the driveways, you can see the, the roads, and it's just mashed. Yeah, it's it's scary, isn't it? <laughs> and the, like you say, the potential wasn't, there wasn't a warning, it just went straight to emergency, you're just chilling. Mm. Suddenly it's an emergency, you get to cover, <coughs> and then, what, two, three hours later, you come out of cover mm. and it's that. Yes. Lives gone, hit or well not? Well, yeah, unfortunately, lives lost. But then, like your whole lives, the damage isn't the most important thing because the lives is mm -hmm. unfortunately. But if you do survive, your whole livelihood has gone. Yeah. Like, which is scary. Yeah. Yes, you've got your life, which is the main thing. But it's like, where do you go from there? Mm. Scary, scary Great imagery available on Google. Devastating. Earth. The tornado yeah. reached peak EF five strength near Eastern Moor, where it swept well-built homes completely off their foundations. This damage was likely caused by winds in the 210 mile per hour Sounds like a range. school, isn't it? Mm. It would finally weaken shortly after exiting Moore and the Oklahoma City metropolitan area. This event has become well known through the large amounts of media coverage and footage, the most famous being Mike Morgan from KFOR. When you have a debris ball and hook echo that well defined, you're going to get quite a reaction from any TV meteorologist. And Mike Morgan definitely reacted accordingly. Tornado emergency for Moore. You folks in Moore, you need to grab whatever it is you need to grab and you need to go underground. Bottom line, grab your kids, grab your loved ones, grab your friends, or just get out of the way. Overall, the event lasted 39 minutes, traveling 30 miles, which is quite a bit shorter than our last entry, the Hackelbergfield Campbell EF5, but it occurred in such a densely populated yeah. area. Also worth noting, this is actually the most recent EF5 tornado. We haven't had an EF5 tornado in over 10 years. That's positive yeah. at least. But. That is good. For number eight, we're going way back to 1953 with the May 11th Waco, Texas F5. This extremely powerful tornado destroyed over 600 homes and 400 commercial wow. buildings, claiming 114 lives. Oh. This makes it the 11th deadliest tornado in US history. And this was actually the most recent single tornado related disaster to have over 100 fatalities until Joplin in 2011. On top of the fatalities, over 600 people were injured. Of course, there is no video of the event, but the photos show just how horrific and yeah, destructive it just yeah. was. The downtown portions and of Waco were hit I especially. I kind of I guess that back then, there were, I, you can't really do much about a tornado, but I suppose back then, less knowledge coverage, of, like, knowledge. Where when they're gonna hit, like warnings. Warnings, emergencies, so is it a case if you look out your window, oh no, we need to get to cover, or was the alarms which, but how late were the alarms? Mm. The technology wasn't as good, wasn't it? So the preparation, or at least the avoidance you could do with it, is harder, I mm. guess. Really hard, including the RT Dennis building, where in that one building alone, oh. 30 would lose their lives. Many of the downtown buildings were constructed poorly, leading to their collapse, burying people inside who were seeking shelter. Wow. Thankfully, the Alico building, which was a newer build, did not collapse. Wow. Some remnants from the tornado can still be seen to this day with the Dr. Pepper Museum. This brick building partially collapsed, but it was fixed up, and the newer bricks are the lighter color shown here. Oh, it is estimated wow. that this tornado had wind speeds close to 261 miles per hour, making it the most powerful we've covered thus far. That's mad. The Waco F5 is significant for a few reasons. First of all, it's one of the deadliest on record ever, a truly devastating event. But it also represents 1953 as a whole. 1953 was a terrible year for tornadoes. There was the Worcester F4 tornado and the Flint Beecher F5 tornado. All three of these tornadoes eventually led to more advances in civil defense against severe weather. Yeah, which makes Except sense. The yeah. 1991 Wichita Andover F5. On April 26, 1991, around 6 p.m., a tornado formed near the city of Hayesville, Kansas. It quickly intensified to an F3 level where it began to leave a path of destruction through the southern suburbs of Wichita. It then crossed the Kansas Turnpike and destroyed the Greenwich Heights subdivision, 
creating damage in line with F-4 tornado strength. Growing in intensity, the tornado entered the McConnell Air Force Base, where it narrowly missed 10 B-1B bombers, worth wow. 280 million each. Oh, that would have been Two expensive. Two of these bombers were equipped with nuclear warheads. The tornado Ooh. destroyed several buildings within the Air Force Base before continuing on towards Andover. As it approached Back Andover- Would that have blown up planes? Oh, the planes would have definitely blown up. But like with a nuclear, with that, yeah, radiation surely is coming out if the nuclear warheads go. Do they have to be activated? Let us in the comments. Like, do they need to be activated for it, the tornado to set them off or would that the impact just set them off? Because again, yes, the damage is bad, but that's not the main thing. But if suddenly a nuclear bomb's gone off, that's pretty bad. That's, yeah. Well, not pretty bad, that's very bad. But I don't know if it would or not. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. Let us in the comments below. Over, the tornado completely swept well-built houses off their foundations on par with F5 level damage. At the same time, the tornado sirens in the city failed to activate. Thankfully, police officers quickly entered the Golden Spur Mobile Home Park, informing the residents to seek shelter. Okay, this that's good at least. Dozens, maybe hundreds of lives, as just 10 minutes later, the trailer park took a direct hit. In the oh. end, there were 17 fatalities and 22 injuries. The 1991 Andover tornado is definitely one of the more well-known F5s. One reason why the tornado has become so iconic is due to it occurring around the same time camcorders became more affordable and abundant in the general population. Most Videos people at the time it. had video cameras, so for that reason there's a ton of footage of the tornado, including the famous Duke Evans footage, and what might be one of the most famous pieces of tornado footage ever, the McConnell Air Force Base footage. Oh my... That's so scary. everywhere. I'm surprised they're still outside. What the, oh my Absolutely days. Absolutely insane. Moving on to number six, the 1974 Xenia Ohio F5. So this specific F5 tornado was part of a huge tornado super outbreak that occurred on April 3rd and 4th of 1974. Okay. Overall, there were 148 confirmed tornadoes resulting in 319 fatalities and $5.3 wow. billion dollars worth of damage adjusted for inflation in 2024. Of the almost 150 tornadoes, seven of them were F5s. Remember what I said earlier, Seven. that there hasn't been an EF5 since 2013 and more? Well, this super outbreak had seven. Arguably the most significant of the F5 tornadoes was the one that hit Xenia, Ohio on April 3rd, resulting in 36 fatalities and over 1,100 injuries. This tornado lasted for 39 minutes, traveling about 30 miles. That's a long we do time. surprisingly it is, have footage it? of this tornado. 16-year-old Xenia resident Bruce Boyd captured the multiple vortices of the tornado using his Super 8 8mm camera. Audio was also recorded using a tape recorder by Mr. <coughs> Broke Shoulder. Since the video is silent, the recorded audio by Broke Shoulder is often paired together with the video from Boyd. Okay. Oh, the noise of that. Oh, you'd hate to see how that out your window near Like the McCall Air Force Base footage from the previous entry, the video captured by Boyd is considered to be one of the most significant videos ever captured of a tornado. Ted Fujita did a large survey of the damage created in Xenia and concluded that the tornado may have had wind speeds over 300 miles per hour. In fact, he originally gave the tornado an F6 plus or minus one rating, but then he reversed his rating, giving it an F5 as an F6 is considered inconceivable damage. Essentially, an F5 means like clean slate destruction. I mean, we're talking all that's left yeah. is a bare concrete yeah. slab. Or so how can there be an F6 if F5 is already pure, true devastation? Mm. You, you can't like, what else can you break? Xenia would be yeah. the only town of the 1974 super outbreak to be visited by President Nixon. When surveying the damage, Nixon stated, As I look back over the disasters, I saw the earthquake in Anchorage in 1964. I saw the hurricanes, Hurricane Camille in 1969 down in Mississippi, and I saw Hurricane Agnes in Wikes Barn, Pennsylvania. And it is hard to tell the difference among them all. But I would say in terms of destruction, just total devastation, this is the worst I've ever seen. Wow. It's mad, isn't it? Like, highlighting them, highlighting the tornadoes we've already seen, the ones we're going to see. What can you do? Mother Nature is so scary. You can't prevent them. You can't predict them. You can't suddenly go, oh, we know we're going to get it on the April 23rd, 2030. Do you know what I mean? It could be an hour. Yeah, and I think as well, you can't prepare, really. Yeah. I mean, you can get out of the house, but you ain't going to make, make, you can't make buildings. it stop your house being taken down. Yeah, at the end of the day, if I go straight through your house, I'm like, how sturdy you've made it, that's going. Mm. Unless it's I mean, a it only takes house. a few windows to go. Exactly. And it's spread through. It's mad, isn't it? Absolutely mad. 
Number 5. The May 27, 1997 Gerald Texas F5. This enigmatic tornado formed around 3.40 p.m. just east of Gerald Texas, parallel to Interstate 35. The weather system that formed the Gerald tornado was unique compared to typical tornadoes. For one, the tornado actually traveled the opposite direction of the vast majority of tornadoes, traveling northeast to southwest rather than the typical southwest to northeast. Okay. At first, the tornado didn't seem like a major threat. It appeared as a tiny rope, barely disturbing okay. hay bales. But within a few minutes, the tornado intensified and grew from a rope to a huge and dark wedge. This was also How a multi vortex tornado. Know, These vortices can be seen in the now infamous Dead Man Walking photo captured by Scott Beckwith. Now at peak strength, the tornado entered the Double Creek Estates subdivision just north of the main part of Gerald where it caused some of the most intense damage ever surveyed. The well-built homes within the Double Creek Estates were completely destroyed and cleaned from their foundations. Clearly F5 level damage. They Within this houses. subdivision, mm -hmm. 27 would lose their lives. Some believe the Gerald F5 tornado had wind speeds over 300 miles per hour, making it one of the strongest, most powerful tornadoes ever recorded. Others believe it wasn't the strong wind speeds that created the strong damage, but the slow moving nature of the tornado. Hmm. It essentially just sat on top of the subdivision. The Gerald yeah, F5 tornado has really managed to capture the fascination of tornado enthusiasts. The fact that it started off as like a small little rope tornado that grew into this huge wedge How does monster. It, do that? it also happened Mad. just a year after Twister was released in 1966. So that was still on the minds of many. All in all, a unique yet very tragic EF5. The number four tornado on this list is the most recent, truly massive and catastrophic tornadic event, and that is the May 22nd, 2011 Joplin, Missouri EF5. We talked about the 2013 Moore F5 earlier, and of course we did mention the 2011 Super Outbreak, but the EF5 that hit Joplin stands out on its own. This yes, I don't know if you remember. We Done this. We did Jop and we did a video. Um, if you haven't seen it, either check out our reaction or the actual footage. It is scary. It's people actually mm. in it, isn't it? I think that's the one where the gas stations. It, it is mad. And again, we're going to see the damage here. It, it's awful to see, isn't yeah. it? But... 158 fatalities, making it the deadliest single tornado event since the Woodward, Oklahoma F5 in 1947. And this occurred in a time where tornadoes were much better understood and homes and buildings were built stronger. Yet still, the event is one of the deadliest in history. It currently ranks as the seventh deadliest in the U.S. The tornado destroyed more than 4,000 buildings, making it the costliest on record at $3.64 billion adjusted for inflation. One aspect that made the Joplin EF5 so deadly was the fact that it was rain-wrapped. People literally couldn't see it coming. There are numerous videos Wait, on the internet of people looking straight towards the tornado, but you can't see anything. It's dark It's just raining. a massive yeah. black wall. God, yeah. terrifying. Yeah, that looks really crazy right over there. Oh, but that's the tornado. Mm. It just looks like it's raining. Yeah. To me, the Joplin EF5 tornado is truly a worst case scenario <coughs> event. I mean, it formed right before it entered the city and then it dissipated right after it left. The tornado tore a massive path through the southern portion of Joplin. Oh, the satellite images horrible. from Google Earth show the large amount of destruction throughout the residential streets and commercial district on the So Lampire scary. Road, and the scar can still be seen to this day. Oh my. Number three on the F5 list is the tornado we actually just mentioned, the April 9th, 1947 Woodward, Oklahoma F5. This was a very long tracked, very intense tornado that completely destroyed Glazier and Higgins in Texas, and then heavily destroyed Woodward, Oklahoma. Mm. The tornado path was at yeah, least I suppose 98 miles. And that's in the Tornado Alley area, mm -hmm. isn't it? So it's that central area where you got, I think it's the cold from the north and the heat from the south hitting, and that's yeah. kind of like top of Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas area, it's like Tornado Alley. Mm. Just forms, it's scary. It could have been as long as 200 miles. However, experts are unsure if the path is just the result of one tornado or a series of tornadoes. 17 died in Glazier, 51 died in Higgins, and 107 died in Woodward. <coughs> Overall, the event claimed 185 lives and injured 1,000, making it the sixth deadliest in U.S. history. The tornado was believed to have been over two miles wide. The destruction in Woodward, Oklahoma was catastrophic. Over 100 blocks of the city were pulverized. There's also a bit of lore behind the Woodward tornado. The deaths of three young girls were never claimed, so their origin is still unknown. They all received proper burials thanks to the generosity of a local resident named Wayne Lawson. Another victim, Joan Gay Croft, went missing after the event. 
According to eyewitnesses, she had an injured leg and was receiving care at a local hospital. While she was waiting with others in the hospital basement, three men in military uniforms took her away claiming that they were taking her to Oklahoma City. And what happened to her after that still remains a mystery to this Wait, day. Wait, what? I did a video about this in case you were interested. But now it's time yeah. to move on to weird. number two, the runner up. Definitely the most well known and infamous modern tornado event. And that is the May 3rd, 1999 Bridge Creek Moor F5. To this day, this is believed to be the most powerful tornado ever recorded, with estimated wind speeds between 300 and 320 miles per yeah, hour. That's insane. Hurricanes are massive, obviously, but in terms of power per square meter, this may be the most powerful weather event in recorded history. Truly a monster. <coughs> the tornado initially touched down around 6.20 p.m. near the small town of Amber, Oklahoma. Initially, it was an F2, but the tornado grew in strength quite quickly as it traveled through the countryside. By the time it actually reached- Can you tell that it's gonna grow in strength? Like, I know you can see them on the map coming, but you go, oh, there's an F2 coming. Can you tell that this F2 in an hour might be an F5, or is it just random? <coughs> Do you know I mean? don't know, yeah. Because it seems to be, no, it seems to be a case of, oh, <coughs> that's a little bit of a short one. Oh, shoot, now it's a massive one, you know? Uh, by the way, you are a little bit alone. Yeah, yeah, sorry guys for the coughing. <laughs> I can't really can't help it. I'm trying really hard. Not yeah, to. no, cough, cough away. I'll try and edit as many as I can out, but like I say, you are ill, aren't you? Yeah. Bridge Creek. This tornado was already a massive wedge F5. Here's some of the damage it caused in Bridge Creek. It's people's lives. Absolutely devastating. Of course, the tornado only had just begun. A very well-defined hook echo had just formed on radar and it was heading straight towards Moore and Southern Oklahoma City. The severity of the situation was incredibly obvious. A huge confirmed tornado was heading straight towards a highly populated area. Mike Morgan and company at KFOR knew the serious nature of the situation and you can hear it in their voices during the live broadcast. Get below ground get in the interior closet or bathroom, get in the bathtub, we plead with you. There it is crossing Interstate 35. There is a tremendous amount of debris in the air. We pray and plead with you, please get down now. Also for the first time ever, a tornado emergency was issued by the National Weather Service. Incredible coverage was also captured by Gary England and his oh. team over at KWTV. Wow. The tornado entered the suburb of Moore, creating a wide path of destruction. It headed north, but then shifted east as it tore through Dell City and then finally left the suburbs of the greater Oklahoma City metro area. All in all, the tornado lasted one hour and 25 minutes. It traveled 38 miles, destroying 8,000 homes, 1,000 apartments, and 260 businesses. Only in an hour. This can be seen for quite a while through historic satellite imagery. Here it is in 1999, and you can still kind of see it as we go through the years. Yeah. And to this day, you can still find abandoned driveways that used to lead to homes that were destroyed in the tornado. Oh yeah. The tornado is significant because it really was a worst case scenario, kind of like Joplin from earlier. <coughs> Many had feared that something like this would happen towards Oklahoma City, and on May 3rd, 1999, it did. The footage from KFOR, especially the scene with the horizontal vortices where Mike Morgan is left speechless, is still one of the most insane and heartbreaking pieces of tornado footage in existence. We, we possibly we can. That's, that's an F. Look at the look there. at the horizontal vortex. That is an F4 to an F5. Just go get safe. Oh my. So gosh. much debris. 89, South 89. Oh, power lines down. <laughs> I. Finally, we have reached number one, the worst and potentially most powerful tornado ever documented, the 1925. Tri-State Tornado. Yeah, we, tornado I think we read about many we did a video First on off, this. It lasted seven hours. Seven hours. Seven. It traveled over 219 time. miles from Missouri to Indiana, making it the longest tracked tornado ever documented. <coughs> and it's also the deadliest in U.S. history, with 695 fatalities and over 2,000 injuries. Some of the hardest hit communities were Murfreesboro, Illinois, where 200 died, DeSoto, wow. Illinois, where 60 died, West Frankfort, Illinois, where 102 died, Griffin, Indiana, where 44 died, and Princeton, Indiana, where 38 died. The tornado was likely rain-wrapped. Witnesses claimed they couldn't see the actual funnel. To them, it just appeared as a dark cloud on the ground, destroying everything in its path. Very it similar to Joplin and the Woodward tornado that we talked about earlier. 
There were other witnesses who say they saw two funnels circulating around each other, confirming that it did indeed have multiple vortices. Oof. Of course, it's always difficult to confirm a tornado Fujita rating prior to the 1970s, but there were reports of homes being wiped off of their foundations, and even railroad tracks being torn up from the ground. With these reports, experts like Thomas Grazulis and Ted Fujita himself have retroactively given this tornado F5 status. This event almost has a mythical aspect to it. It was almost 100 years ago, so we just don't know what happened. Like, yeah, we don't makes know sense. if it was a single tornado or a series of tornadoes. Yeah. We don't know if it was a truly large and powerful F5 or if all the buildings in its path were just poorly built. We just don't know anything about it. There are photos and of course we it's know still about the mass casualties, now. but no one really knows for sure what happened. Like I said earlier in the video, we have not had an EF5 tornado for over 10 years. And this is a good thing and I hope this streak continues for a long time. But we are going into tornado season so be sure to be weather aware, know your tornado safety procedures and with that said thank you so much for watching we'll see you in the next video. Yeah definitely I like even if you're like on the edge of a tornado alley or somewhere where you think mm, mm, we may not shift. get them just be careful <laughs> um, it's always good to be on the safe side and know your precautions <coughs> could protect your children could protect you could protect your parents they might mm -hmm. not be knowledgeable about it i imagine everyone is because it's super super scary but just make sure you are oh it's mad isn't it crazy mother nature just... is insane yeah that's one way to say it and that is one thing where at least in britain we don't really have to worry about mm -hmm. it and that's like a nice little oh we don't have to really worry about it yeah yeah but like i feel the crazy thing is is we had that little tiny didn't we well, yeah we had the small one last and year and that was so scary so imagine yeah exactly we had wind speeds of 100 mile per hour um last october last october uh november archie was only like a couple of weeks old yeah archie was only a couple of weeks old and there was a lot of destruction on the island uh quite a lot of houses had a lot of destruction with a little tornado and you think that's literally not even a third of what you guys get mm. at times it's, it's mad they wiped it? our houses didn't it yeah, yeah it's mad smash that button if you enjoyed guys smash the subscribe button most importantly we hope you're having a fantastic day and hopefully we don't ever see an F5 on E5 in the future. What should we do? Have a fantastic day. And we'll see you legends in the next one. Peace.